Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Like a great many coastal towns, Los Angeles has a wide variety of beaches. This is Long Beach, California. Like you, when I get a day off, I go here too. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, March 18th. We were working the day watch out of robbery division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Harry Didion. My name's Friday. We'd gotten a report that a holdup man we'd been after for months had been located. The report said he was armed. We knew he was dangerous. We had to get him. How was the coffee, Joe? Fine, I brought some back for you. Slats? Joe? Where's Tom? Checking out some tear gas equipment. Figured we might need it. You yeah. confirm that address? Yeah, 2100 Buchanan Avenue, corner house. Hi, right, Skipper. You know what to do when you get out there. Don't take any chances. He's alone in the house, all right? It's supposed to be, yeah. They won't give you much of a break. What do you mean? Heavy on guns, two revolvers, and a hunting rifle. Not afraid to use them either. Be careful. All right. Jay? All right. Yeah. Let's go. Go. See you later. That's a long haul, huh? Hope this washes it up. Hunting rifle and two revolvers. What do you think, Joe? Well, 18 robberies in three months. You know the guy as well as I do. Yeah. What's your guess? His name was Hoffman, George R. In our files, his criminal record dated back to high school days. Petty theft, grand theft auto, burglary, armed robbery. His record included two terms at Preston School of Industry and one at San Quentin. Hoffman's latest campaign was a three-month run of armed robberies. We tried everything we knew to stop him, but it wasn't enough. We'd failed to get a line on him until one of Captain Didion's informants came up with a tip that Hoffman had been hiding out for the past month in a small bungalow on the corner of Buchanan Avenue and Selma Street. According to the information, the suspect had a good supply of food, ammunition, and three guns. 10.15 p.m. Together with Sergeants Tom Gaffney and Slats Henry, Frank and I parked our car down the street and started toward the house. As we approached the house, we could see a light burning in one of the front rooms. All right, Slats, you and Tom want to cover the back? All right, Joe. Go, Tom. All set, Joe? Yeah, let's go. Go. Front window. Yeah. Come on. You didn't give us much choice, mister. You got him, huh? That's right. Well, we'll check the house, Joe. All right, Slats. See you back at the car. Who told you? Who gave you the tip? What's the difference? 
You made it easy enough for you. Might as well open the door and let you in. Yeah, that's right. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Lousy deal. I'll find out who did it. Takes me ten years, I'll find out. I wouldn't make book on that, mister. What do you mean? You might be a little busy for the next ten years. George Hoffman was taken downtown and booked on suspicion of robbery. At a special show-up, he was identified by more than a dozen of his robbery victims. Between his arraignments and his preliminary hearings, we worked together with the district attorney's office in lining up witnesses and preparing the evidence against the suspect. We figured we had an airtight case. Hoffman's trial in Superior Court was set for May 14th. Hi, Joe. Oh, hi, Slats. What's doing? Still raining, Hoffman? Yeah. What happened to your eye? How about that? I'll never live it down. Let me see. First real black eye I ever had. Had bruises, you know. They hurt, believe me. Well, how'd it happen? Well, every week, Gaffney and I go up to the neighborhood boys' club after work to help coach the kids at sports, you know. Yeah, I know. Last week, we had boxing lessons. I was coaching this one youngster. It turned out to be a lot quicker than I thought. He really connected. Well, I guess everybody's heard the story by now, huh? Just about. Gaffney took care of that. Captain called me in this morning, asking me if I wanted to file assault charges against the kid. Big joke. Never fails. You still coaching up there? Not this week. Kids are supposed to get lessons in wrestling. I'm not taking any chances. Yeah. They've been watching television for months. See you later, huh? Right, Slats. Put your coat on, Joe. Why, what's doing? George Hoffman. Yeah? Just broke jail. The morning of his escape, Hoffman was scheduled to appear in Superior Court for trial. According to routine, he was taken from his county jail cell on the 12th floor of the Hall of Justice and escorted to the jail shower room on the 14th floor. There, he was to take a bath and change to his civilian clothes for his appearance in court. While he was in the shower room, he turned on the hot water faucets, filling the room with steam to hide his actions from the guard. He succeeded in forcing his way through a door, up the stairs, and got to the roof of the building. Realizing that he couldn't escape down through the building, he dropped over the edge of the roof, down 18 feet, landing on top of a ventilator shaft. From there, using the metal flanges on the shaft, he climbed seven stories down the outside of the building. At the eighth floor, he kicked open a window and got inside an office of the building. He slugged a bailiff who tried to stop him, and then he ran down the remaining flights of stairs into the street and disappeared into the crowd. 20 minutes later, he robbed a dentist's office at 3rd and Los Angeles streets and got away. Police and sheriff's deputies covered the city for him. Frank and I were among them. 11.55 p.m., we checked back into the office. Thanks, Skipper. How about Hoffman, anything new? Nothing. Not a trace of him. He must have a good friend someplace in town. Everything's covered. His friends, relatives, his hideout, everyone he knows, every place he's ever been. We plugged every loophole we can think of. The depots, terminals, the airports, still no trace of him. I don't know. Sure is a strange one. No stranger than climbing down the side of a building. Did you check that story out, Captain? It's the truth. Apparently, Hoffman planned the thing out pretty carefully. Well, how do you mean? The sheriff's men talked to some of the prisoners in the jail. They said Hoffman was practicing for it since the day we put him in there. He'd work out five to six hours every night, building up his hands and fingers. Well, how'd he do that? He used the upper bunk in his cell. He'd hang from the edge of it with the tips of his fingers. He'd do it for hours, pulling his body up and down. He made little grooves in the wall, dug his fingertips into them. Prisoners say he got so he could hold himself up like that ten minutes at a stretch. Well, that's pretty amazing. Robbery, did he? Yeah, little John, I sent him out about ten minutes ago to relieve you. Should be there any minute. Right. What about our schedule, Skipper? As far as I know, we'll go all night on this. Sheriff's office is saying. Uh-huh. You two were relieved at 11.30. Better check back in here at 5.30 a.m., okay? All right. Hot shot. I'll get it. What is it? Drugstore holdup. They think it was Hoffman. <laughs> The scene of the holdup was the Rex Lake Pharmacy on the corner of Pico Boulevard and Pine Lake Street. The victim, a Mr. Clarence Geringer, told us that the holdup man had entered through a rear door, slugged him, and escaped on foot with his overcoat and about $150 in cash. We showed him a number of mug shots. He identified George Hoffman as the bandit. A special detail of men were ordered on a thorough search of the general area around the drugstore. No sign of the suspect. The citywide dragnet continued all that night and into the next day. No developments. The search went on. A week passed. At 10 p.m. on the day Hoffman was scheduled to be tried in Superior Court, he beat up and robbed a 40-year-old liquor salesman in the Highland Park area. Again, he made good his escape. 
Routine investigation failed to turn up a thing. We continued to check out every possible lead. Look at that. That's a bad one. Yes, sir, it sure is. That pretty little mess is gonna cost me 15 brownies. Brownies? Brownies, railroad demerits. Oh. Gee, now I won't be able to go to the convention in Cleveland. They won't let me in. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I ain't got the money to go anyhow. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, now, this fellow you say you saw last night, Townsend, are you sure it was Hoffman? You betcha. I saw his picture in the paper when he climbed down and escaped. I don't say I'm positive it was him, but I'm dandy on faces. <laughs> Maybe the whole system was out of killer. Oh, there's a good reason for it, of course. The whole railroad just needs a complete overhauling. Way overdue. I wonder if you'd mind checking through these pictures, Mr. Townsend. Well, not at all. Gee, that's a mean-looking one. Well, that looks like Harvey, the president of our railroad club. It isn't, though. He wears a brush. That's the one. That's him. Am I right? Yes, sir, that's Hoffman. Do you happen to know where he's staying? Yes, an auto court on Royal Oaks Avenue. He's been there for a month. Say, Sergeant. If you find out it really is this Hoffman, don't tell Mrs. Cox at the Auto Court. It'd just break her heart. That's all? She's sort of an amateur detective. She thinks she knows faces better than I do. <laughs> Say, sure that isn't Harvey. After we left Roy Townsend, we called the office and filled them in. Captain Didion called Pasadena and notified them. Then we drove out to the auto court in which the suspect was reportedly seen. Yes, you want something? Yes, ma'am. You Miss Cox? Yeah, I'm the manager here. If you want lodgings, we're all filled up. Uh, you might try the Golden Eagle straight down the street there. We're police officers, Mrs. Cox. Could you hold that up a little closer? Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, yeah. Do you have a man named Hoffman staying here? Hoffman? No, I don't. Got a Hoffmeyer, though. Sure that's not it? I wonder if you'd look at this picture, please. Could you hold that a little closer, please? Yes, ma'am. Could, could you get a little closer? Well, I'm afraid not, ma'am. Oh, could you step out here, do you suppose? Thank you. Do you recognize him? Yeah, but his name's not Hoffman, it's King. Number 23. He's not in, though. Left about an hour ago. That so? Yeah. I guess he won't be back for another hour. Before going on stakeout at the auto court where George Hoffman was registered, Frank put in a call to the office. The owner of the court, Mrs. Cox, gave us a pass key to cottage number 23 where the suspect was staying. We advised her to say nothing to Hoffman when he returned. We went to Cottage 23 and we waited. An hour passed. Hoffman failed to show. Another hour went by. Still no sign of him. What do you think, Joe? I don't know. Way overdue. You think he might have been tipped? I don't see how Ms. Cox is the only one that knows we're here. No, she wouldn't have any reason to tip him. All his stuff's here, all his clothes. Yeah, well, relax. We've had longer waits than this. Yeah. Yeah. You see who it is? Yeah, it's a man coming from next door. All right. Yeah? Oh, you're new telephone directories. Oh, thanks. Anything wrong? No, everything's all right. Put them right there on the porch. You betcha. Telephone directories. Yeah. Checked with the office. No word. At 5.30, we were still waiting. You know, I was just thinking, Joe. 
Yeah? What about? That fellow Townsend has all those trains. Must be a great hobby, electric trains. It runs into money, doesn't it? It's pretty expensive. I was going to talk to Faye about it. It's real educational. My little boy get a big kick out of having his own train. Well, don't you think he's a little young? He's only three years old, isn't he? Yeah, but I could put it together for him, show him how to run it. Yeah, sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Cox. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but your office just called. They, they wanted me to give you this. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Well, I hope everything's all right. Yes, everything's fine. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll be in my office if there's anything you want. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. What is it? It's from Didion. Yeah. We just picked up Hoffman ten minutes ago. <laughs> suspect, George Hoffman, was taken back to Los Angeles and lodged in the county jail. This time, there was no escape. At his superior court trial on August 16th, he was convicted on several counts of armed robbery and sentenced to the state penitentiary. From August to January of the following year, the months went fast. We washed up a string of liquor holdups just before Christmas. We got two days off. In January, Frank was off work for a week with a bad dose of the flu. Another five months went by. Toward the end of June, we got word that George Hoffman was no longer at the state penitentiary. After serving 11 months, the former holdup man had been paroled into the Army with a provision that he serve overseas. Another three weeks passed. July 12th, Tuesday. Frank and I had lunch at Eddie's Cafe, and we checked back in at the office. Good meal, huh? Want a soda, man? What for? Well, I don't know about you, but that Eddie can change his menu. Fried beans and pastrami sandwiches, that's all we ever get. Not from the way you dug in them, I kind of got the idea I liked them. Well, I like them, sure, but eat too much. Look at me. Three sandwiches and two plates of beans. No wonder I can't eat dinner. All right, Joe. Flats, I didn't know you two were back from lunch. Okay, if I grab a sandwich? Yeah, sure, go ahead, we'll cover. Oh, uh, there's someone waiting to see you in the next room. Oh, who is it? I'll get him. You want to come in here? Yeah, thanks. See you later, Joe. All right, Flats. Hi, Freddy. Yeah? What's doing? Remember me? George Hoffman? Oh, yeah. Hoffman in the Army uniform. I didn't recognize you. Yeah, I thought I might fool you. Guess you heard about me. Good break, huh, Sergeant? Well, I'm glad you feel that way. How you doing with the Army? I'm pretty good enough. Sharpshooter. Yeah, that figures. I like it. Sorry I'd drop up and see you fellas. See you still got the same partner. Smith? Yeah, we still work together. Oh, yeah. Been a long time, Hoffman. How are you? Pretty good, officer. Thanks. Just thought I'd stop by, you know, show you there's no hard feelings. Sure thing. Got any idea when you're going overseas? You know, boys in my outfit figure day after tomorrow. That's kind of one reason I dropped in to see you. Well, how's that? Well, I know it's pretty nervy, but I got lots of that. See, a bunch of us were on leave till tomorrow noon and figured we'd go out tonight. And I'm a little short. You know how the Army pays. Well, here's a couple of bucks, Hoffman. Will I do you any good? Oh, uh, that's sure swell of you, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. Here's a couple more might help. You know, I can't tell you how I appreciate this. Believe me, I'm going to see that you get this money back. It's all right, Hoffman. Thanks again for the touch. Good of you. Drop us a card if you get a chance. We'd like to know how you're doing over there. Sure thing. Bye, Sergeant. Bye. Good luck to you. Thanks again for the money. Don't mention it. Well, looks like a turn for the better, huh? Yeah. Oh, God, it never fails. My last two bucks. Well, we had to give him something. Yeah, but what do I do for lunch money tomorrow? <laughs> 2 p.m. We drove out to the Wilshire District to interview a victim of a recent drugstore holdup. 4 p.m. We brought him back downtown and took his statement. 4.30 p.m. Friday, Smith? Hi, Skipper. Henry says that ex-con George Hoffman was in today and you talked to him. Yeah, that's right. Have a look. The MP's just left. Well, your two bucks went for nothing, Frank. Hoffman's wanted. Huh? He just broke out of Army prison this morning. Together with the Army authorities, local officers joined in the citywide search for Hoffman. At 10 o'clock that night, a food market at Santa Fe and Rialto was robbed and the proprietor was beaten. From our mug shots, the victim identified Hoffman as the holdup man. Shortly after midnight, a drugstore on Crenshaw was held up. Hoffman was again tabbed as the suspect. The next two days, the search was intensified. No leads. Two more days went by. 
Late Saturday morning, we got a call from an ex-convict who told us that Hoffman had contacted him. Hoffman said he wanted to see him. The informant went on to say that Hoffman had told him he would be at the LCD Tool and Die Works that afternoon. 12.43 p.m., Frank and I drove out to the factory. It was a large brick building on the corner of Chandler Boulevard and Verdugo out in the valley. We talked to our informant, Charles Kilgore. Like I told you on the phone, George called and said that he had to see me. He say what it was about? No, just that it was important. He said he'd call back and confirm it. And it's about that time now. Have you got any idea what it's about? Not the slightest. How is it you know Hoffman? I've known him for years, ever since high school. He's a nice enough guy, but a little impressed with himself, maybe. Well, if he's in trouble, why would he call you? I don't know. We got along pretty good in school. Maybe he figures I can help him out of whatever beef he's in. Uh, what time did he say he'd be here? He said he'd call me back and let me know. Just said that he wanted to see me, that's all. I said I didn't want to see him. I didn't want to get mixed up in anything. I know he's had some trouble with the law. Yeah. He said I was in it whether I liked it or not. And he wanted to know if I was going to be alone here this afternoon. I said yes. Yeah. I got to thinking about it, decided to call you. Excuse me. The LCD Tool and Die Company, Kilgore speaking. Yes? Yeah, George. Uh-huh. Sure, how soon? Okay. It's 107, right on the main floor. Come in the first street entrance right down the hall. Okay, I'll see you then. Hoffman. Yeah? He'll be here in 20 minutes. We asked Kilgore to check with the building maintenance staff and have the halls kept clear of people for the next 45 minutes. 1.24 p.m., we talked to Sergeants Gaffney and Henry. They left to cover the rear of the building. Cars in the area had been alerted and a description of Hoffman had been broadcast to all units. In the event they saw Hoffman, they were to keep him under surveillance, but not to attempt to apprehend him. We waited. 1.30 p.m. One forty. One forty six. All right, hold it up, Hoffman. they're going to do you. I already proved it. I can break jail any time. I proved it twice. Well, you're going right back in again. What's that proof? On October 8th, trial was held in Department 89, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The 
The suspect was tried and convicted of first-degree robbery, three counts, each sentenced to run concurrently.